Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Netgear BR200 VPN router. I did a video about a month ago showing off the Netgear switch and the Netgear Wi-Fi 6 access point. Now we finally got the router and we're gonna do a full video with the full stack with the Netgear hardware. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon storefront and I'll put the link in the description below. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take a closer look at the Netgear BR200 router. And if you wanna see a closer look of the switch in the access point, I'll put a link to my previous video. Here is the Netgear BR200 router. So on the top, we could see the Netgear branding. And if we look on the front, there's gonna be a bunch of different link status lights. So we have one for power, one for internet, one showing if we're connected to the cloud insight, a VPN, and then our LAN ports. On the back, we have a reset button and then four LAN ports. This yellow port is the WAN port, and then we have a 12 volt, 1.5 amp power input, and then a Kensington lock. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the specs of the router. Now we've seen the BR200 router, let's go over some of the specs and there's quite a few. So I'm going to list some of them off, we're not going to go to all of them, but I will leave the link in the description so you can read it. So for connectivity we have gigabit WAN in LAN, so we have four LAN ports in one WAN port. And we could configure DMZ interfaces. Performance from LAN to WAN throughput is 924 megabits per second. And the maximum number of VLANs that we could create on this router is 256. On the security side, we have firewall function, stateful packet inspection, port slash service blocking, denial of service prevention, stealth mode, block TCP flood, and block UDP flood. We have WAN in LAN, ping response control, and we have content filtering for HTTP only. For networking, we could assign the interface a static IP, get it by DHCP or PPPoE. We also have static routes and a few different routing protocols. We could use this router as a DHCP server, but the max amount of DHCP servers we could have is four. And this supports DDNS by Netgear, no IP, DYN.com. For our VPN, we're gonna be using IPsec, and they do have a PPTP server. The operating temperature Temperature of this router is between 0 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius and the output power is 12 volts by 1.5 amp. So we've seen some of the specs, let's look at the network topology and then we'll get these adopted into the Netgear Insight controller. Okay, so this is how our network topology is going to go. Our internet is going to connect to our Netgear BR200 router on the WAN port. And then from the LAN port, we're going to connect the Netgear GC108P switch. And from the switch, we're gonna connect a Wi-Fi 6 access point, which is the Netgear WAX610. The networks we're gonna create is an admin network on 192.168.10.1 slash 24. Then we'll have a staff network on 192.168.20.1 slash 24 on VLAN 20. And we'll have a guest on 192.168.30.1 slash 24 on VLAN 30. Now all we need to do is get these adopted and configured. So the first thing we need to do, we need to get the BR200 internet access. Right now my computer's plugged into the LAN port one and by default, they give us a DHCP address out of the 192.168.1.x network. So we need to point towards the BR200 router and how we do that, we go to a search bar and just type in 192.168.1.1. Here it's gonna prompt us for a username and password. The username is admin and the password is password. Now we're into the router and it says, please consider making a stronger password and I'll press okay. And then we're gonna put in our old password of password. And then we're gonna create a new strong password. And then we'll press apply and okay. We need to log in again with the new password. On the left-hand side of the dashboard, we have our dashboard, the setup wizard, and then we have setup. Under setup, we have device name setup, WAN setup, LAN setup, set password, and attached devices. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change the subnet that the LAN's in. So we'll go to LAN setup, and we could see here that the LAN TCP IP setup is under the 192.168.1.x network, and we're gonna switch that to 192.168. 10.1 with the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. We have our router DHCP server reservations here. So the starting address starts at dot two. I'm gonna move that up to 20 all the way to 254. And then I'll press apply. 
So this is gonna update and it's gonna give our PC a new IP. So we'll have to browse back to 192.168.10.1, which will be the new IP for the BR200. We need to log in with the admin username and password we've created. And you could either go through a setup wizard or you could set it up on your own. So I'm gonna go to our WAN setup. At the top, it says, does your internet connection require a login? So this would be for PPPoE and mine doesn't. I have a static IP. But if you were getting a dynamic IP from your ISP, you would be set to go. It would just be picking one up. Since I'm using static, I'm going to click the radio button that says use static IP address. And then I'm going to fill in my IP address, my IP subnet, my gateway, and then my DNS servers. Okay, I've entered in my ISP static information. I'm going to put my DNS server. So for the primary, I'm going to use Cloudflare. The secondary, I'm going to use Google. And then the third DNS, I'm going to use quad nine. And then all we need to do to get internet access is press apply. Now our internet information has been added. We should be able to reach out to the internet. So I'm going to ping google.ca and we could see that the request replies. So we're connected to the internet. So now we need to go to the Netgear Insight Cloud Portal. Now we're at the Netgear Insight Cloud Portal. We need to enter our credentials. If you haven't registered for an account, you could do so by clicking create an account. I'm gonna log in with my email and password. All right, so now we're at the dashboard and it says you don't have any locations and we're gonna add a new location. We're gonna name the location, I'll call it Mac Telecom. And then we're gonna give the devices a device admin password. I'm gonna enter my address and my country and then the time zone, and then we're gonna press save. Now we've added the new location, let's take a look. Here's the dashboard for Netgear Insight and we don't have any devices added yet, so nothing will show up. So I'm gonna click over on devices, and then I'm gonna hit the add devices. Now we need to specify the serial number of the router the switch and the access point and press go to get them adopted into the Insight Cloud Controller. All the devices have been added into our controller. So let's go ahead and create a wireless network for our admin account. We could see that the switch, the access point and router are all getting an IP out of the admin account. So we'll go up to wireless and then we're gonna click on settings. We're gonna hover over the plus button and add an SSID. And the SSID I'm gonna call it is admin. We're gonna broadcast the SSID. We're gonna broadcast it on both bands and the security level, we'll just leave it as WPA2 personal for now and then put a password of test1234. We're gonna have PMF disabled and then our VLAN is gonna be the management LAN and then we'll press save and configure. There's a couple different things we could do under the Wi-Fi SSID. We could have a Mac access list. We could have a captive portal. We had rate limit. We're just gonna leave it all at default. So next up, we need to create a network for our staff. So we're gonna to wanna to go over to Wired. Under the Wired network, we could see which VLANs are currently in use. We could see group port settings, legs, spanning tree, PoE downtime schedule, and radius configuration. To create a new VLAN, we're gonna press add VLAN. And it says create VLAN network setup. The setup will create network VLANs which support both Wired and wireless devices. We'll press continue. And then it says, warning, this VLAN will not be sent to business routers with no trunk or access port, and we'll press OK. So the network name we're gonna give it is staff. The description will be staff as well. The network type is gonna be a data network, but we could choose voice or video as well. The VLAN name we'll give it is staff, and then the VLAN ID will be 20, and then we'll hit next. On this page, we need to specify our trunk ports. So our trunk port will be our connection from the switch to the router, and then from the switch to our access point. So I am on port four of the router, and then I'm on port seven and eight of the switch, and then we're gonna press trunk port. So now all of those ports are trunk ports and we'll have the VLAN spanning through it. Under advanced settings, we could do video optimization for IGMP snooping. We're just gonna leave it all on default, and then we're gonna press next. Now we could specify if we want to create a Wi-Fi SSID for this wired network, and we do. So we're going to add new Wi-Fi. We'll call it staff. We're going to broadcast and it will be on both bands. The security is going to be WPA personal and I'll put test one, two, three, four, and then we'll press add. So on this page, this will be our IP configuration. So for the subnet mask, we're going to do it as slash 24, 255.255. .255. 
192.255.0. And then we're going to give it the IP of the staff network. So 192.168.20.1 and press next. On this page, we're going to set up our DHCP server. So the gateway IP is 192.168.20.1. And the subnet mask is a slash 24. And then we're going to enable the DHCP server. It's going to give us a starting range from 20.2 to 254. I'm going to change that to 20.20 .20 to 254 and press next. We have network sharing. If we wanted the staff to access the management network, we would hit this toggle switch on. We don't want that. So we're going to press next. Then we'll press confirm and the network will create. Now we can see the SAF network has been assigned and when it has the VLAN ID of 20. Now I'm going to create the guest network. I'm not going to show it as it's the exact same settings as what we did with the staff network. Now our guest network is created. We could put a rate limit on how much bandwidth we want to give them. So we could click on the edit pencil. We could set up a captive portal or rate limiting. We're just going to do the rate limiting for now. So we're going to want to enable the settings and I'm going to switch it to megabits per second. I'm going to give them about 5 megabits per second up and 10 down. And then we press save. And this should limit them to 10 down and 5 up. So the last thing we'll take a look at is some of the features of the router. So I'm going to go over to routers. I'm going to double click on my router. And this will bring up our configuration page. So we have a summary which is going to show us the status of our ports. And then we have our device details. We look and see the topology. And this will just show us what is connected together. We could see our connected clients. And then we could see which DHCP servers are configured. So we have our 10 network, our 20 network, and our 30 network as DHCP servers. We could look at WAN IP and this will show us all our WAN settings. And then we could look at IPsec VPN. As far as I could tell, there was no way to make a remote user VPN. This will just add a rule to do a site-to-site -site VPN. I only have the one Netgear router, but in another video, we'll connect a site-to-site -site VPN between a Netgear router and a UDM Pro. We take a look under statistics, and this will show us our temperature, our CPU, our WAN transmit and receive, and our LAN transmit and receive. Under traffic, it will show us the same as statistics, but it will be in a graph form. And then we could look at VLANs in use. Right now we have four VLANs in use. So the management VLAN is the native VLAN and then we have 20, 30, and then we have this video VLAN that was created by default. Then we could take a look at configuration backup and restore. And this is where we would wanna create a backup which would take all of our network config. We could do an RMA and then we could troubleshoot. I also couldn't really find anywhere to specify firewall rules besides when we were creating the networks to allow them to talk to each other or not talk to each other. So one major thing to mention is Netgear Insight is subscription based. All the devices I have came with a free year subscription, but once that runs out, we will have to pay for each device. So that's it for this video. I'm gonna to try to figure out if they have a remote user VPN, and if they do, I'll create a separate video on that. If you guys have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.